Can we get to a point where we're building units to grow in the Permian alone to two to three million barrels a day of production? That's quite possible. Those are just adding more units. What does that mean? When you get to those levels, you're producing 50,000 tons per annum without drilling a well. Your cash flow is... Talking Lithium here with Volt Lithium and Alex, great to have you here talking Lithium and DLE. And you're quite close to the oil and gas industry, which is a first for us, previously only having talked brine and hard rock. Well, it's nice to be here. Yeah, and uh, Alex, my, my first question, um, there's been a lot of talk about DLE uh, last year. There's up to 20 companies with different technologies. Uh, I'll just take Standard Lithium with Koch Industries already having invested, invested a few hundred million. So where are you currently with your DLE process and I think you've even brought us a sample along. I have. Uh, well, where we're at is uh, we've, been in, we've been in business for the past couple of years and we, we had two primary focuses for the business. The first was we better be able to do the lithium extraction on our own, so we're developing our own technology. And the second was we want to focus on low concentration brine from produced water in the oil and gas industry. And the reason being, here's a good example. When, when, when I think about the oil and gas industry and oil production, typically, okay, this is a uh, typical situation. You're getting anywhere from two to four barrels of water produced for every barrel of oil produced. And in the reservoirs we're focusing in, there's lithium in that water. So our focus has been, let's f extract lithium from producing reservoirs. The main reason there's infrastructure there and they're producing today. Now back to your question about where are we at with our direct lithium extraction process. We built a demonstration plant in Calgary, Alberta, Canada in the fall of last year. And the purpose was we wanted to advance our technology. We are focused on direct lithium extraction and we're also focused on producing products. So here's a good example of what we've done in Northwest Alberta. This is a, uh, a vial of lithium carbonate, 99.9% .9 pure, from our brine up in Northwest Alberta. Now what is a little bit unique about that is the concentration. So the grade of that is 34 parts per million. So the cri critical component or the critical threshold that we've achieved is being able to produce lithium concentrate, lithium carbonate from very low concentration brine. Who are you actually partnering with in the DLE space? Do you have a university uh, that you're cooperating with on the research and development? Or do you have that in-house? What is your setup on R&D? What we've done is um, we've partnered with uh, uh, a company called Sterling Chemicals. Uh, and uh, the two founders of Volt, myself and my partner, Marty Skase, he's the founder of Sterling Chemicals. And what we've done is sign a technical services agreement for them to do the lithium uh, extraction work for us on our behalf. And where their lab is located is up in the Nanotechnology Research Center up in uh, Edmonton, Alberta, Canada. We've also been working with University, the National Research Council of Canada to develop this technology. This technology is our own. The IP is held by Volt and the team works very closely with Volt. So we took that initial extraction technology and have developed our process in-house to create lithium carbonate from low concentration brine. Okay, yeah, I'm sure we'll also do a deep dive session then on the technology itself. Ideally, even with the guys from Sterling, it would be great to have them here on our channel. Now, talking about uh, the lithium markets, um, you had a financing last year. Markets have been very brutal for lithium uh, juniors uh, in North America. And looking at your share price, you've held up pretty well. What's, uh, what's the secret? Tightly held stock? Um, high confidence in shareholders or you've just delivered very well against your roadmap. What's the secret here, Alex? Well, what we're doing is a little novel. And so our approach is to focus on producing reservoirs. And so for us to go into production, to get to cash flow, to build our first real commercial unit, it's gonna cost about $20 million. And the cash flow generated from that will be north of 20 million. So we don't have to spend that billion dollars to get into production. We've got a clear sight to get into production. When we talked with, when we raised our money last year, we had some specific deliverables and goals to achieve. One was to build a de development plant. We've done that. The other thing was to do a preliminary economic assessment. We achieved that. 
but most importantly was to advance our technology and that's what we've done uh, on our own to get to where we're producing carbonate today and so I think as our shareholder base sees what we're doing from an accomplishment perspective there's a, now a clearer line of sight to get into production as we move into 2025. Okay, and talking about production um, cost, of course, um, we know that the hard rock is uh, more expensive, it's up to $5,000, whereas the brine in South America is uh, way down at $2,800 or so. Where does your production process sit in terms of cost? Yeah, so for the brine that we processed to lithium carbonate in Northern Alberta, where the concentration was 34 parts per million, our, cost, our costs are about 2,900 a ton. Now at higher grades, our costs go down dramatically. Uh, we have a novel process in how we're working. By having our own technology, by having our own demonstration plant, we're able to constantly improve. And that's what we're focused on. And that's what the operational team has really focused on. So we started with chemistry in terms of creating our process for direct lithium extraction we've moved to engineering and as we've moved from a chemistry to an engineering approach the chemistry hasn't been left behind it's just the engineering approach has kicked in with the volt team and now we're really dropping our costs just to translate that for our audience is it fair to say that you're kind of piggybacking on the oil and gas projects the existing oil and gas projects here absolutely it's so critical I mean, in the, where we are up in Northwest Alberta, there's 1,300 wells up there that we've got access to ultimately that we can get into production with. Now, if I look at where we see an opportunity in North America, when I look at the largest basin in North America, today the Permian's producing about 18 million barrels of water to a day and it's got lithium in it. The concentrations are anywhere from 30 to 50 parts per million and most people would say, well, Alex, you can't do that. My comment is, well, we've done it up in Rainbow Lake where it's 34 parts per million. We're getting 99% extraction and our operating costs to go into production are 28 to 2,900 a ton. This is doable. We, by working with oil companies, we don't have the footprint. We don't have the permitting issues. It's producing today, so for us, we see a clear line of sight to get into production and start generating cash flow. And would you say that it will also help you in terms of financing as the oil and gas industry is multiple times larger than the mining industry in itself in terms of revenue, but also uh, free cash flow? Uh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and one of the big risks that we see, so in terms of our strategy going forward, what are we doing? Well, right now, because we can produce our own lithium carbonate in-house, we're starting to get samples to refiners and off-takers. We can do that because we can produce it in-house. That's a critical component because you want to be able to sell your product. The other side though is you want to have certainty of supply. So by working with the oil and gas industry where they're producing water today, you can provide certainty of supply for off-takers and that's so critical. We're not taking exploration risk and that's a key difference between us and pretty much most other people that have to build the mine themselves. It's just we take that risk out of the equation. And thus far we've of course been talking about piggybacking on the operational side once you are in operations. Do you also think there's piggybacking involved on the capital expenditure side where if you're talking about a lithium mine you're talking about hundreds of millions of dollars required to go into production. How does that look like uh, for Fault Lithium? What we have to do, what we're in the process of doing right now to get into production is the process we're focusing on right now is doing in-house scale up and I think that's what you're going to see from us um, over the next six months. We need to show before we go to the field we've got to scale in-house and that's our main focus. Uh, we keep, we haven't seen any limitations on what we're doing um, but we've got to show it and prove it. Just like we thought we could produce lithium carbonate before but we actually had to show that we can do it. So we're focusing on showing how we can scale it up so that we can move into the field and move into commercial operations and then really drive together with the companies in the oil and gas industry because it's a benefit for them too. Um, we see ourselves partnering. We see ourselves sharing in cash flow from operations. The oil industry has a huge opportunity to change the narrative on the energy transition because while the oil production may be going down, the water production isn't. 
And so the opportunity is to transition the wells, transition the infrastructure to focus on lithium as opposed to necessarily the oil and gas industry. How would it translate to capital expenditures to get into production for you for your first plant? Well, for the first plant, the, the cost will be about 20 million. And the question is, if we're working with the producers, our motive is to share in the costs and share in the cash flow. So from a lithium perspective, from a capex, from a volt perspective, let's say it's 10 million. Now, that doesn't mean it's gonna be equity financed. There is, uh, we're working with uh, the Canadian Infrastructure Bank. We're having discuss initial discussions with the DOE. We're having lots of discussions with potential off takers. There is a need to, to get this finance. So I'm, I don't believe that Volt has to come up with the equity. The opportunity is so large. So when we, I'll go back to that initial $20 million unit that's gonna cash flow 20 million. Okay, so where can we go to? Again, if we look at the Permian, there are producers in the Permian that produce a lot of water. I mean, ultimately, can we get to a point where we're building units to grow in the Permian alone to two to three million barrels a day of production? That's quite possible. Those are just adding more units. What does that mean? When you get to those levels, you're producing 50,000 tons per annum without drilling a well. Your cash flow is significant at that point in time. And that's when you get real interest from groups like the DOE. They need to accelerate the lithium production in North America. And this is the fastest track to get there. And I know right now there's, of course, uh, some negative sentiment on EV, so electric vehicle um, deployment, um, electric vehicle market share. But if you look at China, they're looking at 50% EV market share as of uh, 2025. That's not going to go anywhere, uh, away anytime soon. So um, our midterm, long term, if you also see the battery density, how many watt per kilogram, that's going up five to 6% per year, year on year. So definitely the trend is our friend in lithium um, and mid to long term, that should bounce back strongly if the North American and European car industry wants to survive. Well, and, and I agree. And I, I think what will drive, at least in North America, the opportunity for electric vehicles is having stable, secure supply from North America. And it's got, it can't be, let's build a big mine and you know hope that we can be here in the late 2020s. We need to get there now. And we need to go into production now. We need to prove that we can make it work now. And that's, I think that will drive the industry because again, it, in my opinion, it's certainty of supply which is needed in North America. And that's what we're gonna focus on.